Hey everybody, um, it's me checking in again. Uh, gonna do a kind of a long video today on uh, restoring barn tin. Uh, this has been a, a long project I've kind of been working on for quite a while trying to figure out all the details of how to do this kind of the right way. Um, I have all this barn tin uh, from, from the barn I tore down last winter and I'm gonna use it for the roof of the, of the small house build. So uh, what I have here is a bunch of holes and cracks and uh, miscellaneous defects in the tin uh, that I want to fix. Um, uh, it's been quite the process trying to find the right way to do this so that it's a permanent permanent fix uh, and I won't have to worry about leaks in the future. So uh, you'll see a lot of people they'll use like an epoxy or some sort of tar resin uh, and just put a patch over the hole. So that's really not a permanent solution. Um, eventually the sun's going to uh, make that separate off the tin and it's going to start leaking in the future. So what I have tried, uh, I initially started using the arc welder um, and I, I had it on the lowest setting with like a 7013 or something like that, a really small low amperage uh, um, rod and it just kept blowing holes in the, in the tin. So uh, after that, the next coldest thing is to go to your, um, your gas process welding or brazing um, and there's probably a couple ways you could do this with brazing rod uh, but the one I'm using and the one that seems to be the best so far is actually a, kind of like a solder uh, and I have this product right here uh, it's called uh, Galviz it's a self galvanizing alloy rod it looks like this um, if you look at the videos, uh, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube um, back in the, the early 50s and 60s uh, before Bondo came out a lot of the car fabricators they would use a lead solder to, uh, to patch holes uh, and that's kind of where this comes from except for this is the modern day version uh, this is a lead free product and it's got the galvanizing in it already so uh, that's, that's kind of where this comes from. Uh, it works really, really well. Uh, as the video goes along, I'll kind of show you from start to finish how, uh, how it works. Over there, uh, these, these pieces right here are pieces that I've already patched uh, and finished. Uh, it, they look just like this when I started out. Uh, lots of holes and uh, cracks and everything. So, uh, Actually, here I have laid out the stuff you're going to need to do this. Um, you're definitely, definitely going to need to have a respirator when you do this. Uh, whenever you uh, get galv galvanized metal hot and you actually the galvanized coating, uh, it releases a toxin that's actually poisonous to people and make you really sick. Um, I'm not sure what all the symptoms are, but I know for sure you get a headache. It's not good. Uh, so you'll want a respirator. This one right here is a Miller. I got it from the welding store. Uh, it's really, really good. Um, you're probably going to want to have something to uh, to shear your tin. Uh, this one right here is an, a pneumatic one. It runs off my air compressor. I'll show you later on how it runs. It runs pretty sweet. Uh, obviously, your galvanizing rod. You're going to need some heavy-duty cutters to cut the rod. Uh, I'm not using very much. If you watch the videos of the guys that are uh, doing lead, it's actually called leading when they lead the body. They'll they'll heat the surface and then they'll heat the the lead rod and they'll push it into the hole. Well, th this doesn't require that much because when you heat the rod, it'll actually um, soften the the rod up to like right here. So you end up putting a huge old chunk of metal in there and you don't need that much. So what I do is I just take my my cutters and I I chop off a piece, the small piece for what I need. Um, Another thing that I found to be really, really helpful on this particular kind of tin, again, this is old barn tin. This probably, this is, I know for sure this is over 100 years old. Uh, I used a, a ball peen hammer to, to push out the centers. Uh, I, also, I also come in from the backside and I pop these um, nail holes flush. It makes it a little bit easier to grind them uh, to get, because you'll need a really nice, uh, clean surface to solder to. So I, I use the ball peen hammer uh, to do that and get it nice and clean. 
uh, for the cleaning process, I actually use two different tools. Um, I use this DeWalt. Uh, it's got a it's got a sandpaper head on it right now. This one kind of this one doesn't rough up the metal that ver that much, but it does take the galvanized finish off, so it'll get me down to the tin. Um, I, I tried two different heads on it. I found that that one works better uh, with this uneven surface because you're able to push on it hard and get it down into some of the cracks that something like this won't work. Okay, and the next thing that I have here is, uh, this is just a drill. It's actually a, a hammer drill. You can, you can change the settings. Uh, I'm use, it doesn't really matter what drill you use. I just, I'm using this one because it's, it's a cord operated one so I don't have to keep changing batteries. But what I'm using in this drill that's important is this, this bit right here. And if I'm not mistaken, this is a reamer bit. Uh, it could be called something different, but it works really, really well uh, for doing the really tight areas that you can't hit with this. So you're able to get pretty much any angle you need out of the tin, you can file it off. And uh, later on in the video, I'll kind of show you uh, me running that and how it works and how to, uh, the kind of area that I get clean. Another thing that I use is uh, some welding magnets. Um, I use this on the back side of the hole uh, with another piece of metal to run a patch basically. So magnets are good. These are some really cheap ones from Harbor Freight. They're not worth buying by the way. Um, I'm pretty disappointed with them, but I mean they were cheap. So I've been burning them and running them through the mill. They're, they're, they'll work for what I'm doing. But what I'm going to do at this point is uh, I need to chop this tin to length. So I'll go ahead and stop the video here and then set up kind of a time lapse, show you how I'm measuring it and cutting it and running the running the pneumatic tin shears and all that stuff. So I'll stop here and resume with the time lapse. All right, so I'm getting ready to do this cut and I just realized there's a couple other things I forgot to mention that you're gonna need. Um, one is the way I do this, uh, there's, there's actually like three different ways of doing this so you heat the metal up. Uh, there's acetylene welding, which is acetylene and oxygen, and you run a you run a brazing tip, and then there's propane and oxygen, and then you run a propane brazing tip, and then there's this. This is just a, your your run of the mill propane propane heater, uh, and there's actually a there's a there's a brazing tip that you can run straight off of a like an acetylene bottle that it work too. Um, the temperature for this Galviz is 600 degrees. That's what you're aiming for. Uh, I'll kind of show you what that looks like uh, as far as when the, the, the Galviz is ready to be applied and will bond properly. So you'll need, you'll need some sort of torch. Uh, you can, you can kind of go about it however you want. Uh, this seems to work just fine for me. Uh, and the other thing I'm using is this right here. It's a spray galv, but it's a galvanized coating. So sometimes uh, when I go and I when I do my galvanized patch, uh, it ruins some of the galvanized coating on the out, outside area of the patch. And I'll go back in with this uh, and do a do a spray over it. Now, this particular can, uh, I got this at a welding store. Um, you can see it's 1090 a, a bottle, so it's kind of spendy. Uh, the official word isn't out on how well it works. So you'll probably want something like this to seal the galvanized coating. And one thing I didn't mention about the galv is, uh, is they, at the welding store, they sold it at, uh, in five pound increments. Uh, I don't know if you can buy less than five pounds. You might have to look online if you want to get less than five pounds. It has to do with the M, um, MDS, the material data sheet for shipping purposes which is a lot of stuff I don't need to talk about. But anyways, this stuff is kind of spendy. Uh, it's $29.66 a pound. So I think in total, this ran me about 160 some bucks. Um, but once I get going, you'll realize that you really don't use that much. So I'll probably be able to do the whole lot of tin off of just this one container. Um, and, and for the small house build, which is what I'm using this particular tin for, um, I'm, I'm using the worst of the worst tin. So the stuff you see me working on today, 
uh, is as bad as it gets for the particular tin I have. Um, the stuff that I still have uh, out in my, my wood storage is a lot better condition than this. So um, I'll go ahead and set you up uh, and begin the layout process. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one out. Oh, and one other thing you need is coffee because this is a tedious process. It takes <clears throat> a lot of time and patience to actually get this to work. So uh, that's probably the downside to doing this is how much time it takes. Mm -hmm.